this is Trey Passer, and these are my, I have a movie review, but first, by way of explanation before I start, these are going to be two movie reviews. Um, a few weeks back, a great YouTuber, Razor Wire Reviews, um, for his channel, uh, and I'll leave a link to his channel down below so you can sub to him. He's a great fellow YouTuber from the UK who was having a Akira Kurosawa, sort of a, like a challenge, people to watch his films and rate them and do a video. And he was putting them all together in, in a one video together. And I decided to do that. And the movie I wanted to get, because it was a movie that I'd always heard about, that they said it was an inspiration for for the Magnificent Seven, called Seven Samurai. And I knew there was a criterion for it, so I ordered it, Seven Samurai, and watched it, and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I actually did a review. If you check my videos, you'll see my full review on this movie. It is a classic. Black and white about you know these uh, this poor village that's raided by bandits who hired these seven samurai to defend them. Okay, and it's a great movie by Kira Kurosawa, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Did a review and uploaded it to him, and he thoroughly he liked it, and he's including it in his uh, video. He's gonna upload this weekend. It's like a 54 minute video. Of everybody's reviews. Anybody that participated in this challenge to watch films by Kira Kurosawa. And again, thank you for doing that, my friend, and including me. I truly, truly appreciate that. And you gave me movies to uh, further movies from Akira Kurosawa to look at. You and uh, Dean of DVD. I also have to mention him because he also uh, commented on my video review of Seven Samurai and said, "This here's some more films by Akira Kurosawa you should watch." So what I did was I went on Amazon and I saw two films and I ordered them and got them this week and watched them today, this morning. And the first one, of course, I got two movies. Uh, first one by Akira Kurosawa is 1950s. Uh, Rush, I, I want to see if I pronounce this right. Rashomon. There it is. Starring uh, uh, Tashira Mafani, right there. That I got that one. And then the other film I got is called uh, Akira. Akira, I think that's that way you pronounce it. 1952 by Akira Kurosawa. Okay, there it is. Akira, uh, starring. Takashi Samurai, okay, and first I'll talk about uh, Rashomon. Um, this, I heard about this for a long time, about, they say, oh, this is a great movie, you gotta see it, and I heard about it, but I never, you know, knew what it was about or anything, so like I said, I got it and watched it today, and this movie is black and white, of course, 19, made in 1950, and it's basically the story, uh, it's just a story basically about a hype, about a rape and a murder, Okay, and it's told from four different perspectives. Okay, and the basic story is about a um, a samurai and his wife who's traveling through the um, forest, and they get set upon by a bandit played by uh, to to Shira Mafani right there. Okay, and he, he sees the wife, of course, on you know the samurai is leading his wife on the horse, you know, through the forest, and he sees the the wife, of course, and he's instantly makes up his mind that he's gonna. He's going to possess the wife, that he has to have her, okay? And what takes place next is a rape and a murder. But like I said, you don't know. They tell it from four different perspectives. They tell it from the perspective of the um, of the bandit, of the wife, and the uh, the husband, the murdered husband. And you say, how do, would they tell it through the murdered husband? He got murdered. Well, they tell it through a medium, believe it or not, which is actually not as hokey as it sounds. And also, they tell it through a fourth person, a, um, I forgot the guy's name, uh, he's a, um, not a priest, uh, hold on, I don't want to screw this up, uh, they tell it from the perspective, the fourth guy is, is one of the witnesses, you know, to the crime, and he's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a woodcutter, that's what he is, he's a woodcutter, and he's the, uh, the fourth guy who tells, so you get, you get told these stories from four different perspectives, and they all change, you know, the only thing that's consistent in every story, of course, is the, um, you know, the wife being raped and the, the samurai being murdered, well, or being, you know, winding up dead, let me put it that way. And it's told from four different perspectives, which is, and it's really a really good movie. And like I said, it's only 88 minutes, but it's engrossing and it keeps you, and I absolutely love uh, this actor, uh, Tashira Mafani. He's just a very physical actor and he, you know, he, he has this insane way of 
of, of a, not insane way, but a, he has this real intense way of, in all the movies I've seen him in, he's really intense in all of them. He's just a really good actor. And like I said, this, this movie is told through four perspective, four perspectives. And I guess you have to figure out, you know, you know, which perspective do you believe? Okay, and it's a really, really good movie. And like I said, the beginning of the movie it starts off with this uh, woodcutter and priest basically telling a stranger that comes upon them, uh, you know, they're you know they're they're in this um, in this gatehouse called Rashomon, and they're you know they're waiting out the rain, and this third man comes along, and they you know they they're t speaking to themselves, saying they can't believe the story and what happened and the consequences and stuff. And they start to tell a story to this uh, third man, and of course you get, like I said, you get the four different perspectives, and it's a really, really good movie. Like I said, it's 88 minutes, and it's really good. And I want to say uh, which which perspective I believe. I'm trying to think. I'm kind of I was, I was debating this, you know, going over the, the different perspectives that you get, and I kind of believe the bandits version of this. Without giving it away, I kind of believe the bandit's version of the story. Okay, maybe it's I'm biased because I like <laughs> to sh to Mafani, but I kind of like his perspective of this, and so I, I kind of tend to believe his story. Okay, because I think it's just honest, and he's crazy, but he's honest. I think, which is kind of kind of kind of weird because he's a bandit, so he's of course, yeah, he basically he you know he sets about to rape a woman, so I mean he's not the most trustworthy person, but. I sort of believe his version of the events, okay? But it's a really good movie. Like I said, it's black and white, 88 minutes, and it's really, really good. Great performances, like I said, by him, the the wife, and even the uh, the woodcutter who's telling this, you know, who's telling this story, okay? Who tells the who's the tells the fourth version of the story, okay? So that's that movie, okay? And the next movie I got is called Akira, okay? I think Dean of DVD is the one that recommended this to me. I'm not sure. I know he, him and Razor Y Reviews recommended a couple of movies from Akira Kurosawa, and I think he recommended Akira. And basically, this is a story about a, um, about a, a character uh, played by uh, T Takashi Samuro. Uh, I don't know if I butcher your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> right there. That's him, right there, who plays a bureaucrat who's in charge of uh, a city clerk. He's like a, but he's in charge of the department. And you know, he's, he goes to the same job for 30 years, the same humdrum job, and basically he finds out he has stomach cancer and, and that he's dying. And of course he realizes that he's, he hasn't really done anything with his life after the murder, of a, after the death of his wife. He doesn't really, he hasn't really done anything with his life. So he's basically trying to find meaning in the little time that he has left in his life. Okay, so, um, and it's, and the great thing I love about this, the, the story is great, and I want to see if I butcher his name again. Takirish, Takishi Samurai, right there, that actor right there. He's really, really good. I mean, he's a, he has such an expressive face that, you know, he really wears his, you know, they say people wear their expressions on their face. He really does that. He's just a really intense actor, and this, you feel so much for him. You know, like I say, he's, he finds out he has stomach cancer, and he's trying to find meaning in his life, and trying, you know, besides this, the same old humdrum thing that happens to him, and one night out, he meets a novelist who takes him basically out on the town for the night. And they basically hang out, and, and they pick up the girls, and they they drink and and dance. And but basically, that doesn't fulfill him. That doesn't give him a purpose. Okay. The second the second thing is the second thing that he looks for. There's a a young girl, a young woman, excuse me, that works at the office at the city office that he works in. And she's kind of a carefree spirit, you know, always, you know, full of life and laughing and stuff. And he starts to hang out with her, okay, because she's full of life and she's always, you know, doing things and she's laughing and, and eating and just, she's full of energy. And he he kind of wants to find out what her secret is to, to why she's so happy and, and fulfilled and just always, like, full of life. And basically he hangs out with her for a couple of, you know, he hangs out with her for a couple of nights and to the point where she kind of gets creeped out after a while that, you know, why is he always hanging out with her? And and there's a great scene in the restaurant where they're hanging out, where they're eating, and he basically explains to her, he breaks down and tells her that, yes, I'm dying of cancer, and he's basically trying to find out why she's, you know, he's, he's basically 
trying to find out, you know, why she's so happy and what is her secret for being so happy and full of life. And of course, it totally freaks her out, and and he leaves. And but the thing that actually gives him purpose in this movie is there's a park, and this they show a great scene. Well, not a great, but they show a scene in the beginning of the movie where they, these uh, village, I guess these uh, civilian people, they come, these women, they come, the group of women, they come to the bureaucrat's office, and they're trying to get them to clean up this. Uh, I guess this, there's some kind of uh, some kind of spill in in the park that makes it, you know, basically dangerous for kids, and they want them, they want the city to clean it up, so they can actually make a park for people, you know, for kids to play in. And of course, they shuffle. They show a great scene of how how the bureaucracy, I guess in Japan and or any city of that matter, pushes you from place to place to place to place, and and what he decides to do. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna get that park cleaned up and make a park, a kids' park. For these, people. that's what he's gonna. That's what's gonna give him purpose. And like I said, the, just a great performance by uh, Takeshira Samura, who's just, like I said, he has a real expressive face and it's just intense. And and he has a hard relationship with his son. You know, he just his son doesn't communicate. Even there's even one point where he tries to explain to his son that he's dying, but his son kind of cuts him off. And won't hear it, and basically, you know, yells at him for hanging out with a young woman from his office, saying that, you know, you're bringing shame to the family and stuff. And it's just a really fulfilling movie. Like I said, it's a real emotional movie too. And there's a great scene at the end, which is uh, kind of iconic, that where he's in the park, the park that they uh, clean up, and he's on the swing, and it's snowing, and he's singing this song, uh, basically about life, and he's swinging back and forth, and it's just a a beautifully shot scene and it's just a great one of the great movies I, this is really emotional a really an emotional movie and definitely worth seeing and like I said this movie and also Rashomon just great and I heard Rashomon is coming out on um, Blu-ray on I think a Criterion uh, next month November I believe it's coming out on Criterion so definitely gonna get that Criterion of this and like I said Akira another great movie basically like I said it's I don't. I heard somebody say it compared it to like a Wonderful Life, but I, I think it's a little bit different than the Wonderful Life. I think it, it's more about a man finding himself, like I said, finding meaning in his life. Even though you know, it, take, it took basically his imminent death for him to break out of his malaise, but he ultimately finds a purpose, and he does something really good with it. And another great thing about this movie, um, they after that they that they uh, got to mention this earlier. He dies in the movie. He dies before the end of the movie. Okay, he dies in the park, and they have a wake for him where they have his co-workers, and they have city bureaucrats at the at the at the wake, and they're talking about his life. And sorry, I had to record this part again. Sound wasn't playing in uh, <clears throat> this part where I was going. As I was saying, there's a great scene to what, at the wake for um, for the. Um, for the main character, where they're um, sitting around his co-workers, and um, I believe the deputy mayor comes, and they're basically trying to downplay his role in uh, create, getting the park made, trying to say it was a group effort, that everybody, no one man could have done this. And then um, the deputy mayor and his fellow politicians leave, and then the rest of his co-workers are sitting around drinking sake and um, talking back and forth, and then... There's one guy there that's kind of saying, no, you should give him the credit. It was his, because of his effort, you know, he's arguing back and forth with his other co-workers and stuff, and they're getting drunk, and they're going back and forth, and then they vow to fulfill and be more like him and actually serve the people and not be so um, bureaucratic, you know, not, you know, just, you know, actually do their jobs to the best of their ability and help people. And then later in the movie, you see towards the end, where somebody comes in, I think, asking a question, and they get shuffled along to another department, like before, like the other women in the movie earlier got shuffled on to these various the different departments, left and right. And the one guy that was arguing, mostly to give him credit, he stands up, you know, he jumps out of his chair, knocks his chair down, you know, outraged seemingly, you know, that it's business as usual. They're not actually going to make a change like they promised at this guy's wake. And then he uh, kind of resigns himself and sits back down and 
goes back to his paperwork, and then there's a scene at the end where you see this guy. He's walking, he's walking, going home, I guess, whatever. And he see, he he looks down at the park that this guy helped create and sees the kids playing and stuff. And then it goes off like that. And it's just a really really good movie, definitely uh, worth watching. So Akira and uh, Rashomon, definitely two movies worth getting. Okay, by Akira Kurosawa, and I'm gonna get some more, watch more of his films. And I'm really grateful for uh, again Razor Wire reviews, you know, Dean, Dean of DVD for you know you guys recommending these movies for me. And definitely check them out. If you've seen them, let me know what you think of them. And feel free to leave comments down below. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.